Hey there, ever heard of Invasion of the Body Snatchers? It's a 1956 movie that's got people talking even today. The story? Well, it's about aliens who make exact copies of people and take over the world. Sounds pretty wild, right? But here's the thing, there's a lot more to it than just aliens and clones. If you're into funny, shocking, and sad stuff, then keep your eyes peeled. There are plenty of facts and anecdotes about this movie that'll blow your mind. But first, let me ask you this, is there a scene or moment from this flick that stuck with you? Maybe it's something creepy or intense. We'd love to know. And hey, do you have any cherished memories or personal experiences tied to this movie? Share them with us down below in the comments. We're all ears, so stick around for some juicy tidbits about Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You won't want to miss it. The Invasion story and Invasion of the Body Snatchers isn't just a sci-fi thing, it's a big deal in our culture. It's about aliens taking over a small town by turning people into emotionless copies of themselves. The movie talks about love and being unique, especially through the characters Miles and Becky, who fight against becoming emotionless like everyone else. The original ending was pretty intense, with Miles trying to warn people desperately, but they changed it to a happier one. The actors in the movie did a great job, especially Kevin McCarthy, Dana Winter, and Carolyn Jones. Some people think the movie is about big issues like people being afraid of communism and losing their personal rights. Even though it's been remade a bunch of times, the 1956 version is still super important in sci-fi and horror. The story and characters are so good that anyone who loves movies should watch it. Kevin McCarthy and author Jack Finney consistently rejected claims that the narrative of this film serves as a commentary on McCarthyism and communism, asserting it merely functions as a suspenseful thriller. Director Don Siegel, however, acknowledged implicit political references to Senator Joseph McCarthy and totalitarianism despite his attempt to downplay them. Eight actors from the film would go on to become notable figures in The Twilight Zone, Kevin McCarthy, Larry Gates, Gene Wills, Virginia Christine, Everett Glass, Dabs Greer, Pat O'Malley, and Richard Deacon. Interestingly, director Don Siegel also directed two episodes of The Twilight Zone. The memorable tunnel scene, where the protagonist briefly conceals himself from the townspeople, was filmed at Bronson Cave in Griffith Park, known locally as the Back Cave. This insight into the film's political undertones, the subsequent Twilight Zone connections, and the iconic tunnel scene add layers of significance to Invasion of the Body Snatchers, revealing a narrative that extends beyond its surface tension and suspense. In one scene, a siren blares as Miles and Becky flee from pursuing townspeople. The distinctive sound is a diaphone, a civil defense alert commonly used by fire departments. Some sources claim it originated from Sierra Mater, while others assert it came from Larkspur, California. Dana Winter, known for her role in the movie, began her career in English theater before being discovered by an American agent who brought her to the States to work. Additionally, Becky and Miles quote Shakespeare twice, reciting lines from A Midsummer Night's Dream in King Lear. The film's plot closely mirrors that of the book, with some differences in the ending and certain plot elements. Kevin McCarthy, known for his role in the film, also portrayed President Harry Truman in a touring production of Give Em Hell Harry, which premiered at the Hippodrome Theater in Waco, Texas in 1986. Dana Winter, another notable figure from the movie, was a lifelong member of the National Union of Journalists in England and the Foreign Press Association. These tidbits provide insight into the lives and careers of the actors involved in the 1956 movie. In the 1956 movie, key figures played pivotal roles behind the scenes. Dabs Greer, recognized for officiating two iconic TV weddings, served as the army chaplain marrying Rom and Laura Petrie in The Dick Van Dyke Show, and later portrayed the minister uniting Mike and Carol Brady in The Brady Bunch. Walter Wanger, the respected producer, earned admiration from everyone involved. However, actor Kevin McCarthy revealed that director Don Siegel, despite later praising Wanger, felt the producer was more diplomatic than effective in handling issues like humor, titles, and additional scenes. McCarthy hinted that Siegel might have referred to Wanger as a pod if they hadn't been partners. Larry Gates, making his Broadway debut, played the befuddled Sidney Redlich in Bell Book and Candle. These behind-the-scenes glimpses shed light on the dynamics during the production, adding layers to the narrative. Growing up in Binghamton, NY, Richard Deacon shared proximity with Rod Serling, creator of The Twilight Zone. Living just a mile away, they coexisted through childhood, and Richard graduated from Binghamton Central High School in 1938. In the shadows of production, Kevin McCarthy and director Don Siegel clandestinely seized a print of the film for an early preview in Long Beach, CA. 
recording the audience's reactions, they presented it to studio heads who vehemently opposed, promptly cutting Siegel's access to the film. Dana Winter, in her distinctive style, pronounced her first name Dana, the same as the more common Donna. Their stories intertwine in the creation of a film that would leave a lasting impact on science fiction cinema, capturing moments of secrecy, rebellion, and linguistic idiosyncrasies. In the initial stages of creating the film, director Don Siegel, along with writer Daniel Mainwaring and producer Walter Wanger, faced a notable disagreement with the studio regarding the inclusion of humor in the script. The team had incorporated humorous scenes, some even improvised by the actors during filming. Testing the waters without the studio's knowledge, Siegel and Wanger presented a work print to a preview audience. The audience reaction oscillated between shrieks, screams, and laughter. Siegel had discreetly recorded the audience's response, aiming to showcase the positive reception to the studio. However, allied artist head Steve Broidy vehemently opposed the humor, demanding its removal from the final cut. Noteworthy in the cast is Carolyn Jones, who, despite being a natural strawberry blonde, opted for a black hair dye for her role in the film. Jones continued to maintain this hair color for several years, gaining recognition, particularly as Morticia in the television series The Addams Family. As the cast took shape, Gig Young, Dick Powell, Joseph Cotton, and Richard Kiley were all considered for the role of Dr. Miles Bennell. The deliberation eventually led to the casting of the chosen actor, setting the stage for the film's production. In the intricate process of bringing Invasion of the Body Snatchers to life, these behind-the-scenes details shed light on the creative conflicts and casting considerations that shaped the final version of the film. Kevin McCarthy, known for his role in the 1951 film Death of a Salesman, earned acclaim despite the movie's lackluster box office performance. His portrayal garnered him a nomination at the Academy Awards alongside lead actor Frederick March. During a pivotal scene around one hour and 13 minutes into the film, the protagonist follows enchanting music to a source, only to discover it emanating from a truck at a pod farm. The radio station on the truck bears the call letters KCAA. Interestingly, this station did not exist during the movie's filming in 1955, but was established in Loma Linda, CA in 1964. Today, KCAA broadcasts a diverse range of programming, including progressive talk shows and classic radio dramas. Production designer Ted Hayworth devised an ingenious yet cost-effective method for creating the pods, totaling around $30,000. The most challenging aspect was when the pods burst open, revealing lifelike impressions of the actors. To achieve this effect, actors underwent the uncomfortable process of having naked impressions of themselves made from thin, skin-tight latex. Carolyn Jones, who suffered from claustrophobia, found the experience particularly grueling. Dana Winter recalled the discomfort of being encased in the material with only a small opening for breathing. Despite the challenges, the cast persevered, resulting in the iconic scenes that define the film.